Hi, my name is Rod and this is the Oracle Boat Shop and I'm working on the Acorn Dinghy. So in this episode, we're going to cover uh, removing the boat from the molds, uh, disassembling the mold so the boat can sit on a stand and the first order of business will be to install the daggerboard box. So let's get to it. To build the daggerboard case, I need to look at the plans here and look at the various views that they've given and some measurements are here and some measurements are not. So I'm just going to use my calipers to scale up on the 1 to 8 scale. So we've got three views. We've got the profile view looking at it from the side here. Here's our box and it's giving us some uh, dimensions for some of the pieces that sort of frame out the box. <coughs> this is looking at it from the plan view in a sense because we're looking at it from the end and it just shows some of the measurements here and then we're looking at it from the top where we call maybe from the half breadth view whatever looking down from the top where it fits under the mid thwart seat uh, and so the seat actually is braced by an extension of the dagger board box. <coughs> uh, plans call for just using the same plywood as would have been on the hull but I'll be making it out of the uh, red cedar left over from the planking. So these will be the two sides. I've cut it to the proper length and planed it down to 5 8 Now we have one spacer in here. The opening needs to be at least 3 quarters. So uh, just a little over 3 quarters on my spacer here. Only because I'd like to have a little bit of room for the dagger board to slide in there nicely. Since I'm using uh, solid wood which may expand a little bit want to make sure that uh, it doesn't bind so all the rest of the framing pieces are, are made of mahogany it's just a mock up here see how it's going to work now the bottom logs i've actually uh, dadoed a little bit i'd like to see them sitting over top of the hog in the bottom of the boat and this uh, makes sure that i get enough surface area on the uh, hog itself because otherwise the way that I was going to have this put together would have been uh, a little bit too wide. I'm using a little bit more thicker bigger dimensional lumber than they're calling for only because I'm using solid cedar for the sides of the box. So nothing's really lined up here at the moment but that's going to be the bottom. Now one of these uh, vertical end braces here or spacers will be cut off flush with the bottom. The other actually goes down through the bottom of the boat to create some structural support. Before assembling the box I'm actually going to put a couple of coats of epoxy on the inside face which I'm just looking at as being the least attractive piece of, of cedar. So the other side is sort of the better face. I'm just going to put all this epoxy onto here and just brush it out. And it is a very warm day here of about 35 degrees Celsius or well, for those still on the Fahrenheit scale, that's damn hot. Darn hot. Probably 100 degrees. 
So I'm going to put another second coat on there probably in a couple of hours. When that's cured, then I can assemble it and uh, the rest can be uh, coated with varnish or, and or epoxy later. I have two coats of epoxy on the side panels of the daggerboard box. I'm just going to scuff this up and also add a couple of coats of varnish to that as well. So that it's a bit rough right now and make it nice and smooth so the centerboard will slide in nice and easy. It's time to assemble this box. So what I had to do was sand off the varnish on the ends here where the uh, brace, the inside bracing spacer is going to go. Completely neglected or forgot the fact that I can't really glue epoxy to varnish. Uh, not very hard to just sand that off anyway. I could have easily just put some masking tape on there when I varnished but I forgot to do that. So here we go. We're just going to brush epoxy on all the mating surfaces. Next step is put an end cap on here and on the other end which will come up underneath inside there. So there's a bit of shaping to do. We clean it all up. I think I'll run a fillet along the bottom here to tidy it up. Sand it all down, epoxy coat everything and then it's ready to install. Well, here we go. I've got to drill a hole through the bottom of the boat in off from the outside to the inside so I can determine where the ends most most importantly where the fore end of this keel is this this pin here will come up through and this edge here should sit flush with that if we've done all the mathematics right drill a couple I do not need to drill this whole thing out and make a perfect slot. The intention will be to cut out sort of that square opening a bit bigger so that that uh, tongue, so to speak, will come through from the inside. And I'll have a few holes drilled in here, big enough that I can get a uh, flush cutting router bit in to just trim the hole through the hull, the exact same dimensions as the opening through the box. So I'm just going to take my drill here and a few holes in here where I can see to the inside. Maybe take my j my jigsaw and cut a little bit of an opening big enough for, for a router bit to fit through. All I'm trying to do is get it somewhat clean so that I can get some chisels in there and make really what would be called a, a mortise. I think I'll do the rest by hand now. So it's not going to matter if this uh, square slot is longer down this way because it's eventually going to be routed out completely. I'm just trying to get this in there to fit as best as I can. And I'm using a I don't know, whatever tool kind of works for me right now. And chiseling is very hard because uh, I'm against the grain. I'm using rasp. Here I'm just using a dry, a small, uh, I don't know what you call it, a small keyhole saw. And just kind of use that as a rasp on the end to make the slot long enough. No one's going to see this really once it's all in there. <coughs> because it'll all be completely buried.
to install this and make sure that the box is perfectly vertical and down the center line, I need to level up the boat. So it's just sitting in a stand right now so I can just slide it apart to starboard here a little bit and get that bubble line up on center which it is perfectly right now. Then I can use a level down and I'll put some bracing in. So let's figure that out next. I think before committing to gluing this in, uh, I've got a spron screw here which was used to attach the keel, put down in. But I'd be concerned that you never know, one day you might have to replace that keel piece and you would have no access to that screw. So I'm going to move it forward and that will just get filled with epoxy anyways. How far forward do I need to go? To there. Put a little mark there. Okay, here we go. Now this is all going to get glued down. The only thing I really don't want is a lot of epoxy squeezing into the opening. That's going to make it more difficult for me to uh, route through there. So I'm going to spread it closer to the edge here and after routed if I have to get in there and fill some small gaps that's going to be just fine. So, my little framing jig rigged up here, should be able to uh, hold this in place, checking on vertical. Okay, well I've been leaning on the boat, so I'm just going to check again that it is level. Design this frame to have one on either side. I'm just going to put that onto there. Onto there. The back end here can actually go down more. I see a gap underneath the back. So I'm going to go level to the uh, center line. The center line is level. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's level to the ground or I mean level to the rest of the boat. But if that's level, how does the top of my box look? Bang right on. So I now know that. The top of the box is level to the uh, center line. Clamps, adjust, and hold her in place. Put that onto there. And that onto there. That's going to have to do. Now just get in there and clean up some of the squeezed out epoxy. See a bit of a gap underneath there. I want to just get some thickened epoxy into there. Can't have water sitting under there. So it's kind of a very small fillet in there and then we'll just... Now that the dagger board center box is in, the next step in the video series will be to steam bend some frames in here out of white oak. So thank you very much. See you next time. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Do consider giving it a like, maybe a share. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button.